This is a type of crustacea called a Daphnia. They're about a millimeter long and they're amazing to look at under a microscope because they're semi-transparent. You can see their internal organs at work. You can even see their tiny little hearts beating. A Daphnia's heart is myogenic, which is unusual for a crustacean, but it's something that they share in common with humans. Myogenic means that the pulse is regulated within the organ itself instead of relying on an external signal from the nervous system. So Daphnia are sometimes proposed as a model organism for humans because we might expect their hearts to react in a similar way to a human heart to things like chemical stimulus and things like that. So um, the classic experiment that you're supposed to be able to do is give Daphnia a, a little bit of caffeine and it increases their heart rate. So um, Daphnia absorb chemicals through the surface of their body. So if you increase the concentration of caffeine in the liquid that they are in, they should absorb some of it and their heart rate should go up. This is a classic experiment. You can do it at school and stuff like that, but I haven't been able to reproduce it here. And the more research I do online, it seems that there isn't that much success. Um, I mean, if you can find a, a well-designed experiment that seems to show a positive result for caffeine increasing the heart rate of Daphne, then please share it with me. But I wonder if there's actually nothing in it. But what is cool is you can change the heart rate of Daphnia by changing the temperature of it. And this happens naturally in their environment. Like if you get some Daphnia out of a pond, that's where you're gonna find them. If you do that on a cold day and measure their heart rate and then do it again, but extract the Daphnia out of a, a warm pond on a warm day, their heart weight, their heart weight? Their heart rate uh, will be greater um, when they're in warm water. And I really like this because there's a neat relationship here between chemistry and biology. So we know in chemistry that if you increase the temperature of a chemical reaction, the speed of a chemical reaction will go up. And that's quite easy to understand. Like, what is a chemical reaction? Well, it's just you've got atoms and molecules whizzing around. Sometimes they bump into each other. And when they do, they stick together or they smash apart or some mixture of the two. So when you increase the temperature, well, increasing temperature is just increasing the, the speed that these things are moving around. So if you increase the speed of the movement of the atoms and molecules in a chemical reaction, they're gonna bump into each other more often and they're gonna bump into each other with more force. So you're gonna get more of those chemical bonds or chemical breaks happening. The speed of the reaction goes up. But Daphnia have chemical reactions going on inside their cells like all organisms do. And while each chemical reaction on its own might be simple, they're woven together into a complex network of interdependence, like the products of this chemical reaction feed into the reactants of a few different other chemical reactions and so on. And it's this complexity that leads to the behaviors of the Daphnia. Like, if you wanna get philosophical about it, the organism is an emergent phenomenon of the underlying simple chemical reactions. Or more broadly, biology is an emergent phenomenon of chemistry. Like, that's the relationship between those two subjects. But anyway, the point is, because Daphnia can't regulate its body temperature, if you increase the temperature of its surroundings, you increase its internal temperature as well, which speeds up the chemical reactions inside it. And because it's those chemical reactions that ultimately lead to the behavior, the macroscopic physical behavior of the Daphnia, you can see this simple chemical idea this relationship between temperature and speed, you can see that in the pulsing of the Daphnia's heart. And that's really cool. A couple of other things that I noticed looking at Daphnia under a microscope that are really cool. Uh, the first is how they deal with their fluid environment. So this one's kicking its legs under the microscope and you can see how that causes a current of water to flow around the Daphnia's body. And hopefully you can see that because of the suspended particles in the water there. 
but the way it moves is completely different to the way we experience water moving on the human scale. Like compare it to stirring um, a coffee. Like when you remove the spoon from the coffee, the water continues to rotate for a while. But you can see that's not happening here. Hopefully you can see the kind of juddery motion of the water. It stops and starts in time with the movement of the Daphne's legs. And why is that? Well, it's because of the viscosity of the fluid. It turns out that viscosity changes with scale. Like on the human scale, water isn't particularly viscous, but if you shrunk yourself down to the size of a Daphnia, you would experience water as a very viscous liquid. So the way a Daphnia moves is adapted for a viscous liquid as opposed to a fish, say, whose movement is adapted for a not particularly viscous liquid, even though it's the same liquid in both cases, it's water for both of them. It's just the size that's different. So think about the way a fish moves, like very crudely, there's a back fin that flaps side to side like this. And you'll notice that that motion is time reversible, or at least it looks the same in reverse. Like if I reverse this, how do I do that? Yeah, it looks the same going backwards as it does going forwards. And in a non-viscous liquid, that's very good for propulsion. But if the fish was in a really viscous liquid, what would happen is, you, you know, you'd, the fish would flap its fin, and in doing so, it would move the fluid around it. But as soon as the fin stopped moving, the liquid around it would stop moving as well. And then when the, the fin moves back, it does the reverse, then it just undoes all the motion of the fluid around it that it just did. And so each flap just moves the fluid around it and then moves it back. So it's no good for propulsion. So time reversible motion doesn't work in a viscous liquid. So the Daphnia has to move its limbs differently. It's trying to move water over its mouth parts. That's what it's trying to achieve. That's how it, how it feeds on the small particles in, in the water. So imagine that it kind of flicked the water down and then slowly raised its legs back up and then flicked again. Well, in a non-viscous liquid that would work because you'd, you'd push the water down and it would continue to flow afterwards. And then you slowly lift your legs back up. But in a viscous liquid, you know, you, you push your legs down, the water moves down and then stops. And then even if you slowly bring your legs back up, you're just reversing everything you just did. So that kind of motion or, or that kind of motion for a Daphne isn't going to work. It's not going to move liquid around its body. It's not going to move new liquid over its mouth parts. So instead, and you can see this on the, on the video, it goes like this. It pushes down and then it curls back up and then pushes down and then curls back up like that. And that motion is not um, symmetrical in time. So if I reverse that, it looks different. Okay, one more cool thing that I noticed is this Daphne has these objects inside it that the other ones didn't. That's because this Daphne is pregnant. Those are uh, brood pods. And um, this raises an interesting point, actually, which is about ethics. Like, we can argue over whether Daphne are able to feel pain uh, or whether they're able to suffer. And, you know, if, if you're the sort of person who would happily kill a wasp, for example, then you probably don't have any issues with me making a video about Daphne. But I think it's worth having the discussion, at least. And as far as possible, I've tried to be ethical in the making of this video. So all the Daphnia were returned to their natural habitat after filming. And I guess we could look at like, is, is it stressful for a Daphnia to be put under a microscope, to be put on a, a microscope slide? I suspect not. Um, but I'd be interested to hear uh, your opinions on that. I filmed all the microscope stuff on my phone using an attachment. It's called a U-Handy. Full disclosure, they sent me one for free, but I really like it. And um, they've sent me some promo codes as well. So have a look in the description. You can get, it's like it's better than 20% off. It's like 24% on the, the full one. 
it's nearly 30% off on the, the light version. Uh, the one I've got is the full version, comes with loads of, of attachments and, and different things. It's really good. Check it out. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.